Okay, what's up, everybody? Chris Johnson here at the third shelter rally, so called micro shelter rally, cold micro shelter rally at the Wyndham Hotel. It's 2 30 now, so. They have been doing a. See, no media here. So it's the Wyndham Hotel. Check, one, two. Check, we got power, we got power, we got power. Test, one, two, one, two, test. That's one, that's two, that's three. 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 Okay, so guys, it's the that's third ten. rally. One. The third rally against the uh, Widham Hotel, so there's a proposed shelter. People we'll say it's a micro shelter, so. Chris Johnson here, I'm in my personal capacity, so they can't say anything. My personal capacity, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Get the day started. So, Hyper Monster Rod. Hi. Hey, what's up, bro? What's up, man? Everything good? Oh, yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, everything good. Too many of these. Hey, but you gotta keep on doing it. That's yeah. how they going up. He's running for assembly. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? Doing good. Yeah, it's gonna be on YouTube. Yeah, it's gonna be on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be on YouTube. It's gonna be on YouTube. Yeah. It's gonna take longer to upload. I'm on a crappier phone now, so so take longer to upload. It's gonna take a crappier phone. This is a crappier phone than before. I had a downgrade. So. Yeah, all right. 
sun is sitting away. You know. So this is the third rally, guys. So yeah, MIPD here. They blocked the street off. The reason they do this because there will be a lot of people that come out. It's only 2.30 now, so I think the longer the rally is, more people come out probably at the end. So that's how it is here, guys. So, I mean, what it is. Native Hotel Regal Park, so this is You're Miss Cheryl, right? How are you? You're Miss Cheryl, right? Yes. 
Yeah. You're running against Catalina Cruz, correct? Excuse me? You're running against Catalina Cruz. You're running against Cruz, right? Catalina? No, no. I thought you were... This year, I'm running for district leader. Oh, I thought I saw you in the ledger. It's too late. I, I would have been one month late yeah. in getting public funding. And she would have gotten $175,000 in public funding. And I would have gotten zero. So it was just too late to do it this year. Yeah. And uh, the elected officials know when they're putting into the law that it's required to be... You're, as a candidate, you're required to file four months before the election that they're doing the wrong thing. So, uh, why are you out here? Like, people ask, like, why are you out here doing this? Like, you're. It's... I live three blocks away. Yeah. I am a lifelong resident of Rigo Park. When I was a child, I was able to go to the local playgrounds and be safe. My parents knew I was safe in this neighborhood. Putting a men's shelter for men who need supervision, 100 of them, next to two playgrounds and elementary schools and doctor's offices is completely unacceptable. We need to help people in need. We need to help the homeless. But this is not helping anybody because those men will not have the support they need I've spoken to police officers in the area. They're already called to this facility. They don't know what to do or how to handle it. And the shelter hasn't even opened. So, I believe that if anything should be put here, it should be different. It should be for veterans. It should be for seniors. There's one across the street already for families. You're going to put families across the street that are in need next to homeless men? We're going to prey on them, possibly? That's not acceptable. It's not safe for anyone. It's not safe for our neighborhood. So how do you feel about elected officials uh, like Ramos and Cruz and uh, Jessica Gonzalez Rojas and Grace Bing saying that, well, like, you guys are, like, racist for doing this. You could be... No, well, they haven't called me racist. I have spoken to a number of the elected officials and their representatives. Yeah. What they have said to me is that the local community board was informed... The local community board was formed to a small extent. Where was anybody to inform the neighborhood and involve the neighborhood, typically, when there's any proposal made for a community? In New York City, the public has been involved, informed. There have been formal public hearings. They had their hearing 10.30 at night. I mean, who, who do they expect to be there? I was informed by one of our neighbors in Forest Hills that I had, Cheryl, you must go to the January meeting because they are going to be bringing up the hearing. I spoke 9.30 at night, guessing about the proposal, and then the city spoke 10.30 at night and didn't give much information. So I subsequently had a, me a talk with a representative of the DHS. She refused to give me any information. One of our associates here, one of the other people who live in the area, took video and pictures of the interaction and couldn't believe it, okay? The woman actually ran out of the room rather than answer any questions. This is unacceptable. It's not safe for the neighborhood. It's not good for the neighborhood. It's not good for the people who need the help. Yep. We already have a shelter, and this is now doubling up on this small neighborhood that they cut into pieces, right? Multiple pieces. You asked about the elected officials. The elected officials realize there aren't enough votes in each little piece to affect them, right? So I contacted a number of the elected officials and, and got very little response, okay? And, and, an exception is Councilman Holden. Thank you. He's the only exception I'm aware of. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. What, what is your name? Christopher. Christopher, Christopher. Johnson. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I have a question. Yeah, of course. Yeah. What did this baby do to deserve? A hundred single homeless men in walking distance, like actually on her way to the, to the park. This little baby, she's not even two years old. Mm -hmm. Now, hundred people. You're not talking about anybody in the future. There are statistics at this point. Which means there's going to be dozens of people who are mentally disturbed. There's going to be dozens of people who have drug issues. There's going to be dozens of people who have criminal records. Yeah. And why are we bringing them in 
So th this baby cannot go to the park. Stay no. We have a drug treatment facility that's going to be open for the third row. But what does this child do to deserve this shelter on her way to the park? You know, innocent baby. Innocent baby. Thank you. Respect the children. We need to protect and our children. We come from La Rosa Sur. It's a non-profit organization for little kids that we teach them um, free art, free tennis, free basketball, and yoga. And we need to protect our kids. Please take these people out of here and pull things that we are able to use. Like uh, um, these were children. This is our future, our children. Please do something about it. It's not fair. All of this dumped in this one little pocket of Rico Tar, and there's not one shelter in Hills. Not one. We're going to have at least two. Not fair. Well, we should have our kids in danger, you know? Take these people out of here and use it for something that is worth it. Like our future, our children. Seniors. Media. Oh, yeah. And the family, you too. And the other thing we're concerned about, what about the elderly in the neighborhood? Are you afraid walking around? Hey, I'm just media. I can't really yeah. take a side on this. I mean, I mean, I get it. But I can't take, it, I yeah. can't take it. No, I understand that. But it's yeah. Really yeah, I know. Especially what we have is uh, also the other men's shelter up by Atlas Park. You know, and then the other place. Yeah. the 7th of April. So that's all.
Sure. Take, yeah, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I know who he is. Right, yeah. I know. I know who he is. Thank you. All right. Thank you, bro. Good afternoon, everyone. We're clear, right? No more shelters, right? Well, let me hear it. No more shelters. No more shelters. No more shelters. No more shelters. I got to hear you. All right, good afternoon, good afternoon. We are here now the third time, in case the city doesn't understand what we're trying to convey. My name is Hiram Monstrad. I'm a district leader from right across the street in East Elmhurst and Corona. This is an issue that has impacted our community. So you should know from Queens Boulevard to LaGuardia Airport, there are 15 homeless shelters. Queens has more homeless shelters than any other borough. The majority of the shelter residents are not from Queens. All right, these are the facts. They don't want to tell us the facts because they want us to be dumb. The majority of them don't live in Queens. Queens has more shelters than any other borough. And between Queens Boulevard and LaGuardia Airport, we have 15 homeless shelters, mostly of people who never lived in Queens. Is that fair? No. Is that fair? No. We are asking for the city of New York 
to implement fair share. We're not saying no shelters ever, but we are saying you can't oversaturate our community and you have to talk to the community and let them know and not come here like a thief in the night and open up a hundred man, single men shelter in our community. Yeah. Right? right? Is that too hard? No. So, as you can see, we have a very multicultural group of people here today because it's an issue that impacts us all. I want to thank Regal Park United, East Summers Corona Alliance for helping us put this together. I want to thank the NYPD, the 112th Precinct. Can we give them an applause? This group of people supports our police officers. And we know they do a tough job and they're very underappreciated, but we appreciate them. Let me also say, the Alliance put out a report about two weeks ago. There's a shelter on 111th Street and the Horace Harding, very close to here. The Holiday Inn Express. In 2017, Commissioner Banks of the Department of Homeless Services for the City of New York stated publicly on a press release that they would close by 2019. It is now 2024 and they're still open. And they have placed there 38 registered sex offenders. 26 of them Level three, the most dangerous sex offenders that have raped children as young as six years old. Okay, and I'm saying a lot of people are videotaping this. Clearly I'm aware that I can't be spreading falsehoods. These are the facts according to the New York State Registry. Incredible that the city has brought them to our community but never had a discussion with any of us. That shelter is close to two public schools, an elementary school, a high school, and a park for disabled children. And this is what the city has done. The majority of our elected officials have been silent. Silent. There's one or two of us out here that raise the common sense banner and we say, we need fairness, we need safety, and we need to ensure that no community is oversaturated. Yep. We have seen, and now I'm gonna delve into something else for the minute, we have seen how the city of New York in particular has spent billions and billions of dollars on these shelters. But they don't invest in real affordable housing. If they really wanna help folks who need help, Give them a place to live and not a hotel room in our community. Right? Give them a place to live, but not a hotel room in our community. And shame on the Wyndham Garden. Shame, 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 shame. I know that I will never book a room in the Wyndham Garden for the rest of my life or the Holiday Inn Express. Remember that next time you're booking a hotel room. Remember whose banner it is that's opening up in our community's homeless shelters without consulting, without talking to us. There are some really special people. All of you are special because you're here today instead of doing something else to fight for what's right and to fight for your community. So I encourage everyone who's here to remember who's with you and who is not. Because there's plenty of people who have said that what we're doing here is not right. Defending our community. But we're gonna defend our community and we're gonna fight on. I wanna in invite uh, a representative council member, Robert Holden is supporting us and his office has some information to share with us today. We've been talking to his office now for the last month and a half of how we can put together a plan of action to stop this. To stop it here 
and stop it in other parts of Queens. So I want to invite his representative, Mr. Phil Wong, to share a few words. Phil, un aplauso. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all for coming. This is what the community looks like. And if the city is trying to sneak in the shelter without the community's knowledge, without the community's input, we have to fight back and we have to stop it. If you don't stop it, they're going to look for more hotels, they're going to flip more buildings into homeless shelters. This will never end. Make no mistake, it's not going to stop here. They're going to look for the next hotel, next building that's, gonna, that's intended for apartments. They're going to take it over and they're going to convert. Now, uh, Councilman Holden, Robert Holden had two meetings with the Department of Homeless Services and the operator of this shelter. It is called, uh, the agency is called CHI. Don't forget these three letters, CHI, Community Housing Initiatives. Now, let me get the address right, right? They are based out of White Plains, not New York City. White Plains. Now, right away, you have to ask, what, what do they know? Well, what do they know about New York City? Okay? Oh, uh, wait, sorry, sorry. 75 South Broadway, White Plains. That's where they're based from. And uh, we have... We have asked them sincerely, what hotels, what shelters have you operated, and what is your track record? And the answer to the councilman was, we cannot tell you. You hear that? We cannot tell you. So right now, Councilman Holden have to foil, foil the contract to this shelter as well as other contracts that uh, the agency has with the city of New York. Now that's gonna take a couple weeks and that's basically the giving the councilman a hard time, giving you a hard time. Because when he spoke, when he asked questions, he was representing us, all of us. All of us. Even though his district ends at Queens Boulevard, he's fighting this on his own. He's not getting support from Lynn Showman. And he's not, it's sad, this is sad, but it's the truth. He's not getting support from Lynn Schumann, and he's not getting support from the councilman that represents this district, Gennaro. He's fighting this alone, don't forget that. Now, back to the FOIL. So he's FOILing the information, but uh, our office have done a little research, and this is what we have. Are you ready for this? $56 million contract. Our money. Our money, $56 million contract over five years. Now, one second, one second, all right? Now, supposedly it covers two other shelters that they're operating, but since we don't know which other shelters they're operating, this is the only one we know so far, we're getting more information. But think about it, if you divide it up five years, 365 uh, uh, days a year, it comes out to be like $300 a day. Wow. $275, $300 a day. That's serious money that I could use to rent some real apartments, real housing to these homeless people. They are not solving the problems. They are feeding it. They are feeding it. They are keeping the problem around so they can make more money. This is a business. This is a business, all right? Do not forget that. Uh, any, all right, so anyway, uh, there are plenty of other speakers, so I'm going to quickly wrap up. As soon as we have updates, I'll let uh, Hiram know. I'll let the, uh, the, the, uh, this group here know, and then we will continue this fight. But uh, so far, what we heard is, is ridiculous. They're not respecting the councilman. They're not respecting you. So we're going to keep fighting. We're going we're gonna to stop this. And it stops right here, right now. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you. Uh. All right, Phil, from Council Member Robert Holden's office. Thank you. Fifty-six million dollars. Someone is getting rich. Someone is getting rich and wealthy from our tax dollars, promoting more misery because they're not giving anyone a real place to live or services a hotel room. With this also today is Malika Shabazz, who is on the Left Frack Tenants Association right across the street, 
20,000 somewhat people who are also concerned because even though it's across the street in another district, it's a short walk. There's two public schools close to this hotel. There's a playground right to the right of us. I could throw a, a baseball and reach it. That's where it is. And this is what the city planners have decided was good policy. So Malika, share a few words on behalf of yourself and the residents of Left Rack City. Khadija Shabazz and I am a former president of the Left Rack City Tennis Association. I have represented over I say 15 plus thousand residents for many years. I um, I'm very concerned about this because we have to realize that when people put shelters in your community these people are not prison. They're not in prison. They can go anywhere in the area. They are free to go wherever they want to go. Even if they have a curfew, whatever the curfew is, and may have put in a curfew from 6.30 in the morning to 11 o'clock at night, a lot of things can happen between those hours. Even if they have security inside the hotel, that's not security outside in the streets. And we have to be very mindful of how we going to be walking these streets, going shopping, our parents, our children going to school, and even in the summertime, you know, it's warmer, so they're going to be out in the street. And if you look at the parks that they have really wrecked over there in Manhattan, it's disgusting, and we do not want that in our community. I don't know what type of programs they have for these people. We don't know where these people are coming from. You know, what type of structure programs that will help them transition into the community to be productive citizens in our society. We have been going through a lot of changes in our community, and I've been approached by homeless people on 57th Avenue. I don't know what shelter they're in, but they're on 57th Avenue. You know, and you've got the malls. We've got all these malls here. They're going to come into these malls. They don't have anything. So if you don't have anything, that means you're going to be taken from other people. And when you're taken from other people, you're causing a very serious problem. And we have to come together. I'm surprised that a lot more people is not out here because we're all affected. It's not my district, but my district is affected. You know, and uh, all I can say is that I don't know what I don't know what the uh, the city or who's making all these decisions. Person, you know, but we need to be at their door. We need to be in front of their door. We need to know the person who's actually making the decision. Because when we say city, that doesn't mean who you're talking about. Who's the person? What's their name? Whoever is making these decisions, we need to be at their door. That's where we need to be. I'd rather see us take care of the homeless people in our city if we got to take care of people with our monies you know wherever the hotel owner is wherever the colleagues is whatever politicians that's sp speaking about this we need to be at their door because they don't understand they don't care they're about getting kickbacks and getting money and they're taking our money and giving it to their friends so i leave you as i receive you with respect, salam alaikum. Thank you, Sister Malika. No more shelters. 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 Okay. So, thank you, Malika, for those words. She was quite explicit about what should we, we, we will be doing. It's important that everyone sign up because we're gonna plan a series of other events and we might have to take this show on the road and maybe do a protest in front of the owner of this hotel. Yep. Maybe he'll understand that the community is really upset. And 
send a message to all these operators who just look at these community buildings and hotels as, as money makers with complete disregard for communities. We're not against anyone pursuing the American dream and being entrepreneurs, but you should not do that by negatively impacting communities. And so we'll stand against that. With us today also is a group called Parents in Action. I already told you about the sex offenders that we have living of less than a mile away at the other homeless shelter. We don't know who's coming here. We don't know if they're gonna put 30 or 40 sex offenders right here. We don't know that because they didn't tell us at the Holiday Inn, but they did it. So we have to ask the questions and we have to be vigilant. So we have here today with us Mr. Rolando Bini from Parents in Action. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rolando Vini. I am an immigrant from Latin America, and like many of you, us are immigrants here, living more than 50 years in this beautiful city. Uh, I'm the director of a community-based organization, Parents in Action, actually, Parents in Action for Leadership and Human Rights, two important things. I'm very concerned how our communities are deteriorating. The quality of life has gone down slowly, and there is plenty of dirty, low-life politicians and elected officials who are making deals behind our back without consulting our community. That's unacceptable. We have children, we are family people, we are very concerned having shelters, uh, too many in our community. Let's put a shelter in Wall Street, another in Forest Hill, and let's be fair. We don't we don't need that many shelters in community. Our children will be in danger. We can see a lot of also mentally ill people who live in those shelters, who attack people. It's, it's, it's insane. Uh, we are going down the drain, so please let's get united, spread the word. We need to stop. We don't need these shelters. We need affordable housing. If the dirty politicians were really um, concerned about people, they will do affordable housing with about $9,000 a month for a hotel room. You could buy a house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rolando. Can you imagine living right here, next door, and the city or the agency never even told you that this was happening? In fact, in fact, the people who live here found out because of us what we did handing out flyers their elected official didn't tell them the city didn't tell them the owner of the Wyndham or the operator of the Wyndham didn't tell them and suddenly they found out that the apartment that they bought and invested for and fought and paid mortgage and real estate taxes is going to be exactly next door to a homeless shelter how unfair was that? I don't see the city telling that building that they're gonna get tax free as long as the shelter's here. They won't say that. You still have to pay your taxes and pay your mortgage and your common charges. But everyone living here is gonna live here for free. So we have with us today one of the residents that lives right here and is directly impacted. And he wants to share his sentiment. I can only imagine what it is. I want you to welcome Mr. Josh. Josh, come on up. Good afternoon, guys. Hi, how are you? Yeah, we're, we're affected greatly. I have kids, I have family. We're all on this side of the building, directly next to the shelter, where they have a patio and place to sit for the visitors that were here originally last year. We never had any privacy concerns. People are great. They come, they come to the hotel. They leave it nice. But recently, about a couple months ago, they just, just it's just like a, they steamrolled over us. When they put all of these men on this side, because I saw already they removed the beds. All the beds in the hotel, I believe, have already been removed. What I can see now are two to three cots from my. From my window, I can see into their window. And from their window, they can see into our window. Everybody here, from probably the third floor 
up until wherever. You could see from the street, wherever. Are they gonna allow these men to come out here? Because there's no, there's nothing guarding between the building and the hotel. They can walk right over. There's a parking lot up here that's private. We all pay for our spots, it's private. I have a vehicle up there and I'm worried. I'm gonna have to lock my cars, my car doors. I'm gonna have to make, I'm gonna have to keep my eye on this every day when they're here. And believe it, when I see something, I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna take pictures and I'm gonna send it to whoever I need to send it to. I'm gonna keep documenting as long as it takes. Secondly, this is a garage entrance to our building. That is private also. If anybody has a good idea what's gonna happen when they're here, they're gonna be standing. They're gonna be standing, they're gonna be watching. And this is gonna cause concern because I don't know what type of day people are having, but I come home from work late sometimes. I come from home from work early sometimes. If they see what's coming in, they're gonna wanna see more. I don't know how far it's gonna get, but now we should really have more CCTV out here to see what's really gonna be going on when nobody's looking. I don't know if theirs are working. I don't know if ours are working. We need to really get that straightened out. I don't, I've don't. i taken pictures already of people with cars coming into our building and just using the parking when that's, that's against right here because it's trespassing. They're not supposed to be in here. Also, in the front of the building, there's places that they can sit, maybe sleep. There's guys that sleep under that overpass right there that we've had problems with. In front of Queens Boulevard, they sit on the corner and they beg, excuse me, they beg, you know, they have their signs out and they sit there. And they sit there and sit there. Right across is the post office and the post office also, they have people sleeping on the sidewalks and sitting there when it gets warm in the summertime. This is also, this is gonna add more to that. I don't know, I hope not, but it could happen. Also the park over here, I take my kids there. I can count a few times I had to leave there because there's men in there with no shoes on, sleeping on the benches, smoking weed, doing whatever, sitting there. It, it's it's not right. There, there should be more health and hygiene around, you know, when, when these men come in here, okay? Because it's not going to help. You have a bunch of men that are going to be standing out here. Women are going to be walking back and forth. We don't know if they're going to be catcalling, harassing women, the seniors that walk back and forth here, the kids. It's just not a safe feeling, okay? I moved from a place where I had plenty of this. A lot of the parks were disasters, and even after the parks were rebuilt, there was still, you know, what was left over there. People knew, you know, and it's really hard for the kids, you know, and I don't want my kids growing up around it all the time. A hundred men, and just from today heard registered men not too far away from here that are pedos and sex offenders, and it's crazy, it's crazy, it doesn't belong here. I mean, do they have background checks? When the DHS and, and DSS put them, on, put them over here, I don't think any of them are thinking about us. I think sometimes they just see this building and think we could, they could just throw whoever they want over here. And man, uh, I'm just not looking at this like it's gonna be something great because it's, I, I really don't think it's gonna be great for us, especially that we live right here. And um, there's gonna be, a, it's just a lot more stress than we have to deal with. No more shelter. No more shelters. 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 And let me just say one more thing too. If they do get security over here, what's that gonna do? They're not gonna be able to do anything. They're not gonna help them. It's just bad, and, and then the police too. I mean, they're gonna be getting calls over here. It's, uh, man, ambulances too. We don't know if any of them are emotionally distressed or at all times. We don't know because we don't communicate with these people. We're working, you know, we're living, we're raising families. They're just throwing it right on top of us. They're gonna steamroll us all the time. We have to just keep coming. We have to keep speaking. We have to keep showing up. We have to keep showing them that we care for our families, for the community, and we just have to keep showing up. We have to keep giving back. We have to keep helping. Thank you, Josh. All right, Josh. No more shelters. No more shelters. No more shelters. We need people like Josh and Stephanie and Anna Husto to continue to fight.
and not get tired. We have a couple of more speakers, then we're going to have a couple of announcements. We have with us also someone who was here on the very first day of our protest. She's a longtime community activist. <laughs> well, I'm talking about the never duplicated or imitated Cheryl Fedex. Cheryl, come on up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, my name is Cheryl Fedex. Some of you know me already. I am a lifelong resident of Rico Park. I'm a homeowner. I went to the schools in this neighborhood. It used to be a fairly safe neighborhood. My parents used to be able to send me to the playground by myself and know I was safe. Now the proposal is from the city to put a hundred men who need supervision next to two playgrounds and elementary schools. What are they thinking? They are not thinking. They're pushing it through the community board. They're pushing it through the other community boards and making sure that we don't know the details of what's happening. We have to demand of our government officials, of our city government, that we know exactly what we're facing and that they include us in their decision-making process not hide from us. Why are they hiding from us? I believe that we may need to go to court. I believe that we need to stand together as a community. Someone came up to me earlier today and said, well, there's all these negative comments on Facebook. There are people who are going to make millions and millions of dollars on this. They have ulterior motives. There are people who have agenda items. This is part of their agenda to house the homeless. I believe in helping the homeless and helping those in need. But we have to really help those people with real housing, not make-believe hotels for them where it's just temporary, where it's millions and millions of dollars and they won't really be helped and the community will be hurt. And there are political uh, uh, competitions going on. So this is what's behind those negative ideas, those negative expressions. They are not really sincere for our community, in my opinion. They are not really even sincere to help the homeless because they're not really helping the homeless. They're sticking them into warehouses, not providing. Do they have the ability in this hotel to give them three meals a day for a hundred men? Where are they going to use, the, what facilities are they going to use in order to do that? Our neighborhood facilities, our neighborhood restaurants? I'm not sure. I've spoken to various police officers in the area, and they've told me they get called here now because there are a few men, even though they haven't opened the homeless shelter yet. And every other day they're called to come down already with only a handful of men. In May, they plan to open officially. That was the announcement. before May to try to stop them. I need you, all of us, to work together, to work with us, to work together as a community. They cut up our neighborhood in little pieces so they could say, you're in this district, you're in that district. No, we're in one community together. It's all right, somebody will get it. And we need to work together and not listen to the nonsense but demand the information and demand our voice. Make our voice strong for our neighborhoods so we have decent neighborhoods and safe neighborhoods for our children. Thank you for coming down. Thank you. Well, this is just the beginning. And I'm leaving out an important point. In my view, this is a test in a way to see what they can push through without telling us, informing us, questioning us, considering our needs, the agenda items versus
the needs of us as real people. And we better stop it now. We better stand up and express ourselves now. Thank you. No more shelters. No more shelters. Okay, we're gonna hear from another long time community member. He's been here with us on all the protests. I'm talking about Mr. Peter K himself. Peter, come on up. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Hey guys, thanks for coming out. Um, I'm a little disappointed we didn't have more people. I was out here at 7.30 to about noon giving out flyers. A lot of people said they'd come. So, everybody's homework here. Tell your neighbors, tell your friends. Let's try to bring one, two extra people. To everybody who's here, thank you very much. My mom Joyce came, Lorraine came, she's like a stepmom to me. So, you guys know my story. My great grandparents settled here in 1940 on Queens Boulevard. They were deer, rabbits, you know, a long time ago. I got deep roots here. I'm a homeowner. Um, my mother taught public school here for 31 years. I have a child. Um, so, basically, we're all here to stop this nonsense. Uh, I want to thank Phil Wong for coming out from Councilman Holden's office. Um, obviously, Mr. Gennaro is not here. He won't. He'll respond to me and talk to me, but they won't show up. Lynn Showman, MIA, her whole career, so we don't even have to mention her. Boo to her, enemies of the community, and uh, to all the folks at Community Board Six that spoke for us and then told me on the phone that they were misquoted, that they're for having our neighborhood do our fair share. F you, Community Board Six. We don't need this here. You live next to it. Um, for all our community members here who live in this building, let's pray for them. Nobody wants to live near this monstrosity. It's terrible. My mom used to take me and my little brother to that park. That park's not going to be safe anymore. That's a senior center, and that's a community center for our community, Lost Battalion. Now, it's under renovation, but it will open up again. What are we going to have here when our women, our seniors, and our children are walking by here? The park's already a crap hole. The neighborhood's a crap hole. Look underneath here. I've never seen this neighborhood so dysfunctional, so dirty, with so many garbage walking around here. The crime, the filth. So I'm a big believer of sticking with people who stuck by us. Remember who's here. I say this all the time, but I'm very passionate. Remember who's not here. So Cheryl's here. Give it up for Hiram, because he organizes this. Give him a big round of applause. He came here, and our own council person who's here, the other one who let this happen on her watch, useless showman, so on and so on. I can name everybody else here. They haven't done nothing. They don't want to come here. They don't want to help us. Somebody's making money on it. Hopefully some journalists out here will figure out and connect the dots, cross the T's. But let's remember who stood with the community. Let's remember who didn't. And when you guys go out and vote, remember the guys' face. Remember these people's faces who are here. These are the people we have to stand with because the people that are currently holding seats, they don't give a shit about anybody here. And that's a fact. So it's the fact. No more shelters. We don't want these people here. A hundred single men. We got children. We got wives. We have seniors. They're already not safe. Put a hundred men here. You just put this neighborhood in such jeopardy. This neighbor will not be safe. I don't want my mother walking around. I don't want my wife, my little girl work. I don't want my, my stepmom, Lorraine, she's like a stepmom. I don't want her walking around this neighborhood. So let's stand strong. Reach out to our elected officials. Email them. Call them. Harass them. And remember the people who are here. They give a crap. The rest of them don't. And I thank everybody for coming out here. No more shelters. Regal Park United. No more shelters. And Stephanie says, are you kidding me? I am kidding me. That's right, Steph. All right, so we're going to be wrapping it up in a minute. The final parting thoughts are don't get discouraged. That's what they want. They get, they get you discouraged and you don't come to the rally and they want you to go home, watch TV and Netflix and forget about everything. But that's not what we're going to do. No. Get involved in your community board. Find out when the community board is meeting. There should be 500 people going to the community board and saying we need the community board to stand strong with the community. Do you know that they're going to open up another family shelter across the street on Queens Boulevard? Behind the post office. I don't know how they figured that they should put a family shelter across the street from a single men's shelter. I don't understand that at all. So we're going to continue to bring the message out. 
We need everyone to sign in so that we can contact you for the next action that we will be taking, which we are planning as we speak. The last thing I'm going to ask everyone to do is everyone to come cl come on over here closer. Everyone from the back. Come on over. I want to say thank you for standing up for yourselves. Sometimes it's not that easy. And sometimes we think no one's, no one's there for us. But there are. Look around. These neighbors all came out. We're supporting each other. And that's important. We need to continue to do that. Now, I'm going to ask everyone to turn around and face the wall because we want a picture of today. Today is another day that the community came together. Look at the wall right there. We're going to take this picture because we want to save this picture and allow all those who are not here the opportunity to see what it looks like when the community comes together. What it looks like when we stand up for ourselves. And we need to continue to send the message to everyone who purports to represent us and say to them, we are sick and tired of being sick and tired, Malika. We are sick and tired of the abuse and we are sick and tired of the city and our representatives taking us for granted. They got $56 million for the shelter operators. They got billions of dollars for the casino and for the stadiums. But they can't build housing for the people who need it and they want to put them in our backyards. No more shelters. 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 Thank you very much. So it's over, guys. Now it's over. That's it, that's it, it's done, later.